It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Ravens and the Broncos, and it's coming up next. We find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Just a short time ago, sounds loud enough to reverberate across the Rockies. They're ready for football in Denver as the Broncos get set to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Gaud alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. And CD, our quarterbacks, taking center stage here for each of their respective offenses. Lamar Jackson of the Ravens, Teddy Bridgewater of the Broncos. And Brandon, I think each one might be trying to play some form of keep away from the other because when you think about time of possession and what that means in a game, it's great if you're able to hold on to the football and run your offense at your pace. And it also helps to keep the other guy's offense on the sideline. That's your goal for the game. to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Here comes the Ravens on offense and the man in charge from Louisville, the former MVP, Lamar Jackson. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. him a yard to the 26. Well, every now and then we have to let a cliche fly, partner. And in this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. And this is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State. Carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to break big runs late in games. J.K. Dobbins going to Baltimore, an absolute perfect fit. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league, those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. <laughs> They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And he'll go right back to Andrews. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Three yards the game there, second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. On second down, a run with Dobbins. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. I know you feel that. 
All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. That is not going to be any help as they dump it behind the line of scrimmage. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think his big boys up front, that offensive line, they've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. And Denver has Deontay Spencer deep to return. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. Officially just 27 yards there on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. This is Melvin Gordon. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Bridgewater's throw here into the hands of the receiver, Judy. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Bridgewater. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And this one is incomplete. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll give it to Gordon out of the shotgun. Nifty move by Gordon. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. Throwing, Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's Bridgewater. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Bridgewater. Man open, he's got it complete to Corbin Sutton. 
And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looked like, fortunately, the Broncos able to recover. You better talk to your boy. You better Much talk like to your a running boy. back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. To throw is Bridgewater. This is the tight end fan. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Throwing is Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And McManus able to put it through. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's 3 zip. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. Yeah, it's a four-yard loss. Really sets him back now for second down. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion. And I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw deep into bend right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. Only a yard on the gain there, and that'll set up third and 13. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. From the gun, it's Jackson. He's going deep for Brown. And that's caught inside the 30. 
And all the way down to the 24-yard line. It's a big play there for Baltimore. But for all the deserved accolades Lamar Jackson gets for his running prowess, you know, his deep ball, it's really a thing to behold as well. And what was amazing to me was the fact he was able to get as much on the ball as he did because he was on the run. Normally, when you're on the move like that, you don't expect the ball to go that far. You would think you need your lower body to be involved. That was an all-arm throw. Jackson now off the bootleg. Slings it to Anders, and it's complete. The tight end has it. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Throwing again on second down. Jackson, throw right side is complete to Andrews, his tight end. Touchdown! Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mark Andrews. And the Ravens have taken the lead. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Justin Tucker for the extra point. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. Five plays there on that drive, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. To return it, here's Deontay Spencer. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Bridgewater on first down. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked up by Patrick Queen. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. They'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Yeah. 
Jackson, option right. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. From the gun, Jackson. Open man is Duvernay. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Vic Fangio's thought about it, and he'll indeed throw the red flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Here we go, here we go. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. This is complete to Watkins on the slant. And the Ravens are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. They'll run with Dobbins. And they get him down at the one. He had the broken tackle, but ultimately could not get into the end zone. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I'm and he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. J.K. Dobbins taking it in from a yard out as the Ravens push further out in front. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two. Spencer will elect to not bring it out here. It's a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Mike three. 
They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And that's complete. Albert Okue Buna. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Man coverage on the left side. So I really like the design of this play because they opened up the field and brought their tight end the other way on a crossing route. That's a lot of ground to cover if you're a defender. I've been there before, unable to stay with his man there. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Bridgewater. This is Gordon on the dump off. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. This should have gotten more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. Bridgewater now from the 50. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Bridgewater to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. Get ready. And now here come the Ravens. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 37. Throwing to start the drive. Jackson looking middle and it's incomplete. Defensively celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now. and That's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw is Jackson. And this is caught by Watkins. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Well, for Sammy Watkins, we saw plays like this from time to time in his Kansas City days, and he's still making them here with his new team, the Ravens. Yeah, and that was sheer determination right there. He decided before the play, if there was a sliver, he was going to take advantage of it. Looked the ball in, turned on the Jets, and took it all the way. And the next-gen stats show us the tale of how much yardage he was able to tack on after the catch. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And it's 21 to three. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two play drive that time. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. They will start at the 25 as Spencer elects not to return this. Teddy Bridgewater and the Broncos ready to go on offense. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. 
but in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. A first down throw for Bridgewater. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. And they're able to get this one across the 35. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Bridgewater. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Tyus Bowser, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense it just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Another try after the first down sack. Bridgewater, his throw incomplete. You definitely would like to hit on that one because now you've got a third and long showing up, and you just know defense is going to be getting after it. They are pinning their ears back, and they are coming. The Broncos on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and 19. Bridgewater now. He's going to drop this one down to Gordon, and he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough, and now fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Denver. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and the Ravens, they'll take over. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson, and he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence, does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. That's taken in by Duvernay. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's the option going left on second down. 
fighting through, and he's got space. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. It's going to be a gain of six on the keeper, but it leads to a third down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained, and in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Play action. Now Jackson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Sammy Watkins, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Well, oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. He's certainly not been afraid to take some chances downfield. Now, look, it's paid off for him a couple of times. That time, not so fortunate. And that's where I want to start, what you said. It's paid off a couple of times. So his aggressiveness has been good for his offense for the most part. So he throws an interception there. No one likes that, but I would not rein him back in. The return on investment thus far has been pretty good. Two touchdowns to one interception. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Throwing on second and eight, Bridgewater. He'll get that complete to Albert O. And he'll take this to the other side of Let's midfield go. before Let's going go. out of bounds. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. First down, Bridgewater. That is taken in by the tight end fan. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now a handoff. This is Gordon. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. 43 yards rushing for him now. And he's only carried the ball four times. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going.
Broncos with their first trip to the red zone thus far. They've got it first and goal at the six. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Gordon. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon. And Gordon's going to be stopped short. Yeah, now the Ravens yeah. going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. The kick by McManus is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. Lamar Jackson marching back onto the field. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown. But those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. They'll be hoping to make it a 3-1 to one ratio here in the second quarter. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Devin Duvernay, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Jackson. He finds his man complete. It's Watkins. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Second and ten. Jackson will throw again. He's going deep for Brown. 
And this is what here. Incomplete, they say. Looked like it was intercepted, but he apparently did not get the two feet down in bounds. So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. A field position changer there, 49 yards on the punt. Couple that with a loss on the return. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. Here now a look at Melvin Gordon. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. The Broncos in the hurry up, try to get to their positions and get set quickly. To throw again on second down. Bridgewater got an open man here, and it's K.J. Hamler. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Final play of the half, Bridgewater. Finding the open man, and that's Tim Patrick. And they work this well upfield across the 45. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Ravens. And there were a few factors as to why they built this good size advantage, but the rushing numbers were not all that amazing. We'll see if they can pick it up in the second half. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. getting the football first in this second half as they trail and we are back underway and this will not be returned so the second half begins with a touchback here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter and right out of the gate they face what you think could be a pretty important drive I would say so you know they're down two scores that's not the end of the world it wasn't the strongest of first halves but for them to start clawing back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. Delta, Delta, Delta. 
They'll start the third quarter on the ground with Gordon. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. The last run got nine. That leaves them with second and a yard. Play fake. Bridgewater. He's got his big tight end fan. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. He was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice game. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now the handoff comes to Gordon. 61 yards rushing for him now to this point. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Four yards remain for second down. From the gun, Bridgewater. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Patrick Queen gets him for a loss of 10 yards from his linebacker spot. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to give the ball up. Third and long now after the sack, and we'll see if Bridgewater has a response. Back to throw here. He'll get this one to Patrick. And he will go down right near the 35-yard line. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Here's Bridgewater. He completes this to Sutton. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. From the seven, it's second and five. Throwing Bridgewater. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. 
They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities. But as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. And McManus able to put it through. And they're hanging around here as the lead's down to 12. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need them to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. McManus to kick it away. Oh, the return is Duvernay. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter, so time to retool a bit and probably need to tap into that emotional vein that gets them back to really playing hard and effectively. Because a lot of times we think it's just play calls and this isn't working and they're shutting them down. Sometimes when you get a lead, you lose your edge. You don't play quite as hard. That's what they're looking for here. Trying to get that edge back as they've watched this lead shrink a little. An option handoff here to Dobbins. Alexander Johnson there on the stop. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Jackson. Throw right side is complete to Andrews, his tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. Now a handoff for Dobbins. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Only a yard of the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Well, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Returnable for Spencer. Runs through the contact. A 48-yard punt, seven on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On play action, it's Bridgewater. Now he's flushed out left. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Now Gordon on first down. 
And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 81 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. The CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning upfield, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. Williams is going to have the first down and a little more. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Bridgewater. Over the middle, complete to Judy. Touchdown, Broncos! Bridgewater on target to Jerry Judy. And the Broncos draw a bit closer. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through. That's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. McManus' point after is good. And this is back to a five-point game. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Oh, the return is Duvernay. And able to get this out to the 25. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Dobbins going to take the handoff on the option. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now Jackson get a run, and he's not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And there's also a flag down, and it's in the area of holding. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Jackson. Buying time to his left. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Three. 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 
On third down, Jackson. Open man is Duvernay. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. What hallmark of good defenses? It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Denver's offense ready to go again. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Second and ten now. Third quarter action in Denver. Gordon. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C in completion on first down, then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Third down, Bridgewater. Completes it to Fant on the right side. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on to punt for Denver. Here we go, here we go. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's the Ravens in control of the football. They've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Now Dobbins again on second down. 
And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. The Ravens on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and five. Now it's Jackson. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And he will have a Ravens first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And a penalty flag down as he gets only about a yard. Now let's listen in on the call. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block would be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? Dobbins trying the left side. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. Got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. From the gun, Jackson. And this is caught. That's Watkins. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 47. They go back to the ground with Dobbins. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. As we get late in this one, is altitude a factor for a visiting team in Denver? Is that something that's overplayed? No, it's real. And I know a lot of the visiting teams like to downplay it because they don't want to get into the heads of their players. But you can't avoid it. As soon as you get to the locker room, you get to the stadium, they always post it in there. Welcome to Denver. Altitude. Five. Oh, no, he lost the football. The Broncos say they have it. They do. the scoreboard clock but we're getting near the end of this game but they were in what was really called four minute offense and that's practice being taking care of the football taking time off the clock not giving them a chance to come back but bottom line is what did i say in the beginning taking care of the football that didn't happen didn't do it a costly turnover Just me and you. It's just me and you. 
They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Off the play fake, Bridgewater. This is the tight end fan. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, to watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. On first and ten, Bridgewater. He rifles one that's intercepted. It's Chuck Hart picking it off. And the Ravens will take over here as they get it up to the 33-yard line. Well, that puts a little bit of a wrinkle in their comeback bid. Yeah, everything had turned around for them, hadn't it? I mean, things were now going their way. But you did mention it's a wrinkle in their comeback bid. It's not the death knell for them by any stretch, but now they've got some extra work to do in order to climb all the way back. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 43. And they'll begin by running the option. Good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the broken tackle. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. On second and seven, Jackson. And that'll be caught by the big tight end, Andrews. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Now we've got whistles, and the man slow to get up here is Jones. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Do it again. Working with second and five now. Here's a give to Dobbins. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 56 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there. Gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you guys start thinking about using them here. 
I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Lamar Jackson keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. Now this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one. And in this portion of the field where things shrink a little bit, because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate. You should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep it back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. Tucker with the extra point, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Out of the end zone comes Spencer. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Getting set to go again here, Teddy Bridgewater coming back onto the field. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you're two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors, yet still play perfect football. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He'll buy some time right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Looking to throw again on second down. Bridgewater being chased out left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into his windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. He had no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. A first down throw for Bridgewater. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Derek Wolf popping in for the sack. Well, I think that time he just maybe held on to it a little too long, CD, because after a couple of seconds in this league, you know those defenders are coming. And how many times do we talk about complementary football? We usually talk about does the offense help the defense? Does the defense help the offense? I think in this case, does the quarterback help out his offensive line? You only have a certain amount of time to get rid of the football. They can only do so much. On this play, we got he took him to the three. limits. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Throwing on second and long. Bridgewater flush to his right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down.
Bridgewater. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Well, this is getting close to a no-win situation now. They've got one final shot. They're on their end of the field, and it's fourth and long. This might require a little extra razzle-dazzle to get it done. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time, fourth down, Bridgewater. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the Sean Elliott, and he will bring this across midfield to the 49-yard line. Well, I guess an interception at this point on fourth down is just as bad as an incomplete pass. Either way, the ball goes over to the other side. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in this late in the game, and there's not a whole lot he could do there. And he winds up giving the ball away. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. Edwards now on first and ten. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Again, it's Edwards. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as he'll get it with still a minute 20 left to go in the game. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Flushed it, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up four. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. backwards so he's on to punt it away and he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away and great special teams work here this is knocking on the door of the five they'll spot it at the six yard line I absolutely love the flexibility of these punters their leg drive able to get it way up in the air and that allows the punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time so now Bridgewater and the Broncos down by 12, 30 seconds to go. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And this is going to fall to the ground incomplete. That very nearly their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. To throw on second and ten, Bridgewater. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He's got a man complete. And he's brought down. They took a big shot there. It pays off. A solid gain downfield. 
A huge play there for Denver. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And we talk so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward.